Back in the day when I was a new Rocket League player, I couldn't find a single YouTube video that elaborates on the topic of this video. When should you switch between ball and car cam in Rocket League? Even nowadays it's hard to find good answers to this question. I guess people have just learned to use the ball cam without thinking about it, but a lot of players still struggle with this. I'll try to explain why and when you should turn on or turn off the ball cam as best as I can to make sure you'll improve your skill in the long run. Don't forget to subscribe for completely free and join the Discord for helpful tips related to Rocket League. Also I'm very proud to say that I'm a coach on Master Server, which proves that I know what I'm talking about. Welcome to this video my dudes. For all of you who haven't noticed yet, you can switch the camera's focus between the ball and your car to be able to see more of the field when necessary, or to focus on a ball when you want to go for it. Note that you should play with ball cam on for most of the game, especially when you're in one of the lower ranks and you're still figuring out how the physics of the game work. The more experience you get, the more it doesn't matter if the ball cam is turned on or off. You might wonder, why is that? Well, players who have played hundreds or thousands of hours roughly know where the ball is even though they have no vision on it. Their understanding of the game and more important, their spatial perception is completely different compared to beginners. Alright, now I show you all the different scenarios where I personally turn off the ball cam. Remember, you should have turned it on for most of the game. Scenario number 1. Dribbling. I recommend turning off the ball cam if you're in a one-on-one -on -one situation and the ball is right in front of you or on top of your car or if you're planning to flick the ball. Because if the ball moves to the back of your car, you will no longer be able to see what's in front of you. Turn it off to make sure you have vision on the opponents and therefore obstacles in front of you. If you still can't see the opponent, you can also use your right stick on your controller to look around. Scenario number 2. Air dribbling. In some cases you also want to turn off the ball cam while air dribbling. For example, when you're going for an air dribble bump, when you messed up and the ball is behind your car or maybe when you do a flip reset. The crucial point of this video is that you should always turn the ball cam off when it's necessary to have vision on the opponent. For example, when you're going for a flip reset and you're in the middle of the field, I would have turned ball cam on if the opponent is in the net, but if you can tell that he's challenging you mid air, you should turn it off to see what he's doing so you can react by hitting the ball early or block it. Scenario number 3. Landings and recovery. To make sure your car doesn't get messed up after you aerialed, you can turn off ball cam to land perfectly on the ground, on the wall or even on the ceiling. If you're in the air, flying in one direction and you turn off ball cam it will always focus in this direction so you will see the wall or the ground you're flying to. It's crucial to do this to improve your recovery which is one of the most important aspects of the game. Scenario number 4. Kickoff. I've seen a lot of different kickoffs in my Rock League career up to now, but at higher levels they all have one thing in common. The ball cam is always turned off in the beginning. The reason for that is that the initial flip is the most important and difficult move for a kickoff to get to the ball as fast as possible. It's easier to time this flip with a fixed camera focusing on your car. Everything else regarding a kickoff depends on your experience. If you can't win a single kickoff although you're touching the ball and you don't know why, try to turn off the ball cam right before touching the ball and position yourself oppositely to the opponent. Higher players might be able to do all of this without turning the ball cam off. Scenario number 5. 50-50s. When I'm challenging while the opponent is dribbling towards me, I also turn the ball cam off. But it happens that I forget to do that. If he gets past me, I always regret that I forgot to turn the ball cam off. Of course it's different when you go back to the net, but I'm talking about facing the opponent, front to front challenges. In my opinion it's easier to read what the opponent is planning to do and find the perfect timing and position to win the challenge. It is basically the same as a kickoff. Scenario number 6. Going for boost. I see this a lot when I'm playing. People turning off the ball cam for centuries to find a boost although the opponent shoots straight at the net. 
It's okay to turn off ball cam if you're not 100% sure where the boost is while going back, but maybe consider switching to ball cam right after you've had vision on the boost to be able to adjust your position and take small pads instead of the big boost if it's necessary. It doesn't help if you have full boost, but the ball is in the net. Scenario number 7. Going for a bump. I suggest turning off the ball cam if you want to bump or demo one of the opponents sitting in the net or if you're behind one of them to make sure you hit them even if they try to avoid it. You can also leave ball cam turned on if you want to see what the ball is doing in the meantime so you can back up when necessary. It's way harder to hit the opponent with ball cam on, but sometimes it's enough to just drive towards the opponent to make him panic. In general, you don't want to have ball cam turned off for too long, so you don't miss anything important on the field. Most of the time, when turning off ball cam, you switch back to ball cam right after you have seen what you needed to see. Alright guys, these are the obvious scenarios in which I would definitely switch the camera focus. Don't forget that you can look around with your right stick too. I hope you enjoyed this video, if so, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more awesome content. See you in the next one, peace out.